Welcome very much to Conversations. We're pleased to welcome to the program Paul Ryan. And Paul Ryan's the author, more recently, of a book, uh, Video Mind, Earth Mind. And he's a video artist, one of the very, very early uh, pioneers of understanding the artist from an artistic perspective, the implications of the new video formats. And uh, Paul, welcome very, very much to Conversations. Well, pleasure to be here. And, and to Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Yes. We, we have this book, which is, is, a, is a compilation, in a certain sense, of your life's work, in a real sense. Yeah. But I wonder, maybe we could, maybe the best place to do it very often in these cases is to start with you. You're the center of what we're concerned with right. here. And maybe you could share your own background, because it is correct to say that you were one of those early ones from an artistic and oh, sensitive yeah. perspective investigating the implications of the communications media video and so forth. Your own background, if you could. Well, the video started in 68. Uh, mm. I was at the time working with Marshall McLuhan as a fellow at Fordham. All right. I had found my way to him and was excited by what he was talking about, what he was doing. Yeah. And I said, uh, you know, this guy has either got something or it's full of baloney. So I got a hold of video and started experimenting, thinking about video as a unique medium in the kind of terms that McLuhan had put out there. Yeah, he was, uh, what, the prophet of the electronic media? Or? Yeah, a lot of people called him that. Prophet of the electronic age, yeah. oracle of the new media. He was yeah. very, very popular, very wide oh, read. Yeah. And, and Yeah, and almost forgotten now. You think, yeah, but I wonder if that isn't that he might be... Some of his perceptions might be well to be brought to the fore again. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you you had gotten involved with him. You you had been involved earlier, if I'm not mistaken, in a, in a monastic order. Yeah, no. So I, for, and you were born in New York, I guess. Yeah, I was born in Manhattan. Right. Uh, my father got us out to Jersey when I was a young kid. Yeah. I grew up by a lake in North Jersey. You mm -hmm. know, w hiking the woods and thinking I was Davy Crockett, <laughs> and uh, learned to love nature. Yeah. There. And then after high school, I went into a monastic order and stayed, Roman Catholic monastic order, stayed four and a half years. Yeah. That was uh, the time of the Vatican Council, uh, yes. all the changes in the church. Mm -hmm. So there were a bunch of us in there that got radicalized by what was going on, and we tried to change the monastery. I tried to start a student government in the monastery. <laughs> this is a <little> naive. <laughs> That's his world, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right. And it didn't work. <laughs> you were associated in some way with Thomas Berry? Or? Well, this was the order that Tom Berry, uh, ah. your, your listeners may not know Tom, he's a fantastic uh, person. Absolutely. Uh, author of Dreams of the Earth. Uh, Tom was in the order that I was in, uh -huh. and he was in fact uh, so hot that you were not allowed to go see him. There was sort of an underground railroad of students <laughs> that plugged you into this guy. Right. You know? and. Uh, you would have these after-hour conversations about all kinds of stuff. You know, oh. he, he was terrific. And you were, had you, were you reading Ch Chardin at uh, Tahar? Chardin, yeah. yeah Chardin. Teilhard de Chardin, yeah? yeah, very much. He was in his day, I think, uh, a little bit uh, forbidden in some corners oh, yeah. of the church. Oh, yeah. As well. yeah, no, he was sat on. And, yeah. and Tom Berry was one of the people who was feeding us Chardin. Uh -huh. He was the guy. Right. He arranged for us to go to a conference at Fordham that was on Chardin. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he himself became the president of the Chardin Society. Right. He considers Chardin the most important Christian after Paul the Apostle, yeah. you know, in terms of his thinking. And Chardin was a phenomenon of man. and uh, Yeah, the phenomenon of man. Yeah, he was an amazing force for radicalization in oh, a certain yeah. sense, and bringing radicalization within the... Church, the church yeah. and now there's a great deal of that within the church. Or do you feel? That, I don't mean to well, make this a church discussion, but you know, liberation well, theology um, and the, yeah, <laughs> and the and the bishops and so forth have uh, made the very often well, statements that you yeah. know might bring some uh, light into a very dark kind yeah. of mean spirited no, world. No, I I agree with you. Yeah. The Catholic bishops' organization. I mean, there's a lot to critique about what they're doing, but their sense of social justice yes. comes up strong. You know, yeah. they're arguing for the poor, liberation theology yeah. in um, in South America, yes. Leonardo Boff and those mm -hmm. guys. I mean, they're right on in terms of the best of the Catholic tradition, Christian tradition, in terms of social justice. Uh -huh. yeah. And you were coming at that within the Christian Church, which all, the, the Catholic Church also has a, a sort of a, it has an authoritarian kind oh, yeah, of structure to it, and yes, hierarchy. Indeed. So, but you were from a radical perspective, Chardin and McLuhan also was yeah. very attuned to the Catholic message, wasn't he? Well, McLuhan is a convert. Uh -huh. you know, he converted in thirty-seven. All right. Okay. And uh, I once asked. Uh, Connor Cruz O'Brien about yeah. that, you know, uh -huh. and O'Brien said, well, when did he convert? I said, 37. He said, 
Yates, I never bade you go to Moscow or to Rome. <laughs> Call the Druids home. Oh, I see. <laughs> right, right. So yeah. he had a complaint uh -huh. about McLuhan going for Catholicism. Uh -huh. But for McLuhan, it was a strength that enabled him to see all kinds of things. Yeah, you know? right. He, yeah. yeah. And for me, coming from an oral monastic culture, to find a thinker who understood oral culture yes. as opposed to literate culture. Uh -huh. Everybody said, what's he talking about? Uh -huh. I said, I knew exactly what he was talking about. I had lived in an oral culture. I was training to be a preacher. Uh -huh. So all his analysis of oral culture, literate culture, electronic culture was obvious from uh -huh. where, I, where I was. And, and had, you, had you seen the, the Gutenberg Galaxy? Or, or, or let's see, when did that, do you happen to know when that came out? Do you remember? Gutenberg Galaxy came out in 58, no. 62, I 62, think. 62, yeah. yeah. I haven't oh, seen it in the monastery, no. That came, no, in the monastery, yeah. no. But I mean, that, in that, in that, that, that was the, the sort of environment in which you were in, intellectually getting your roots and yes. beginning to think. Oh, yeah. And that had a strong influence oh, on Oh, yeah, because I, I learned philosophy, you know, I had good philosophy teachers, good theology teachers. So, you know, I was able to understand McLuhan pretty well. Later on, I was able to work with cybernetic theory and semiotics. Yes, we want to talk. Probably because I had a core, you know, yeah. a good discipline of, of mind. Yeah, you know. that's right. And Chardin. And Chardin. Yeah, yeah. right. And then... You know, it's interesting about Chardin. Recently, I've been reading Bergson. Yeah. Henri Bergson is uh -huh. having a revival in philosophic worlds. Go and ahead. I realized that uh, Chardin took a lot of his understanding from Bergson. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 It's really an interesting loop. And it's interesting also that that if I remember from earlier days, even we, you and I were in touch with he is uh, buried, I think, upstate in uh, yes, New York. In Poughkeepsie. And in, in Poughkeepsie, New York, yeah. of all places, even yeah. though he was French and yeah. had spent a lot of time in China with yeah. Peking Man and yeah. so forth. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's interesting. So, in any event, you, you, you did that. We want to just trace this, and it's worthwhile. It, heavy philosophical oh, yeah. training and oh, so yeah. forth. And then became, uh, maybe with McLuhan again, he was at Fordham. He came he down from Fordham. Toronto Correct. to Fordham right Three in that year. feisty time, 66, 67. 67. Yeah, and yeah. you were able to get linked up with him there? And, and well, I was, my, my situation was that I had a conscientious objector, yes. staff status to right. the Vietnam War, uh -huh. and um, <coughs> I had connected with John Culkin, who was yes. bringing McLuhan to Fordham. Mm -hmm. I said, I know you have no graduate program. I'd be willing to work, you know, for nothing, hmm. practically, you know, mm -hmm. if uh, if you'll cover me on, the, if I can do it as alternate service on a conscientious objective. Yeah. Well, actually, back up the the draft board had had <coughs> uh, allowed. I was in Michigan studying computers. Oh, really? I didn't really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I had heard McLuhan on the radio. Yeah. And said the guy's got it. I got to get electronic. Right. I went to Michigan studying computers. The draft board said, No, no, you got to do your alternate service now. Come back to New Jersey and work in a hospital. I'll be darned. Okay. And I said, Well, I got to do something. So I talked to Fordham, and Culkin said, Well, I'll cover you as alternate service on a conscientious objector, but we got to convince the draft board. And you were able to do that. I walked into the draft board with a copy of Understanding Media in my pocket <laughs> and spent an hour explaining how it was good for the country. <laughs> well, all right. And they went that, for it. That would have made a movie, wouldn't it? You know, that would have made a movie. You could have done that. Well, yeah. good. That was good. You were. I hadn't realized you had studied computers, and we want to talk some about yeah. computers and video because you yeah. were a video pioneer. Yeah. And you were able to study with Marshall McLuhan oh, yeah. uh, and came to understand him fairly well. Oh yeah, I had an office two doors down from mm -hmm. him, you know, and he was. I mean, he was fantastic. You know, he yeah, he was an incredible was mind. Yeah. You know, I mean, he would he would come up to you in the morning and say, "I just read this incredible book on the sense ratios of Russian peasants. <laughs> right. They're like tar." You know, and he he'd go <laughs> off. Right. You know? And uh, I had read all this stuff and read all his sources by the time I got there, uh -huh. so that it was it was wonderful. It was a delight being with him oh, and to yeah. be able to study at, at with oh, and. Yeah. At his feet, in a certain sense, yeah. as a mentor. Did you count him one as like a mentor? Or? Yeah. Well, he was yeah. a funny guy. I don't yeah, know if he was you'd a little call little him a, me a mentor. A little bit. A little bit a little I'll, I'll tell you a story. Little, yeah. Okay. Uh, because of Vietnam, I was very interested in war. McLuhan had written this book, War and Peace in the, the Global, Global Village. Village. Yes. I wrote an essay on war based on report from Iron Mountain. Yes. Yes. And I showed it to Marshall, you know, and he 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 looked at it, you know, he came back the next day and he said, Paul, Paul, come on into my office, we've got to talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in his office there was a couch. Yeah. And he sat on the couch, spun around, laid down, as if he were uh, being psychoanalyzed. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the chair yes. like this, and he starts 
you know, it talks about the paper for two minutes right. and then goes into this incredible stream of consciousness really? yeah. about war and, yeah. and life and James Joyce and all yeah, kinds of things. Right. And it went on for an hour. Wow. Yeah. And I said, do you mean Marshall? Uh -huh. You know, I made the mistake of saying, and he said, what, what, what? He uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> came out of it. He should have recorded all this, got <laughs> yeah. it all down, right? Well, it was a lot recorded in McLuhan. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he, and he was such a fan of James Joyce, wasn't oh, he? Yeah. I mean, he yeah. just counted him as a blessing that oh, he yeah. was there. And do you think he was understood in his own time well by the society or by a few? Understood or well, Maybe I don't you could know. summarize what you think well, he was trying to say with his well, medium is the message well, message. Well, he was, uh, I mean, the medium is the message was the idea that any kind of medium has a certain bias. Yes. He drew the this a lot from Harold Innes. Uh -huh. uh, any kind of uh, medium has a certain bias, and that has a bias for communication. If you understand it's biased, you can work with it uh -huh. and do the things that it will lead you to do. Like video has a certain bias that's different than print. Yeah. So if you understand the way it works, you can optimize your use of it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Many times people take media and they do uh, the old thing with the new media, yes. horseless carriage syndrome. Yes. So by McLuhan insisting the medium is the message, he tried to focus attention on new media, specifically electronics, yes. and how they were different than print. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. he had an analysis of print that was brilliant, you know, the Gutenberg galaxy, yes, about yeah, how it had shaped absolutely. society. How a major it, metaphor for organizing Western civilization. Yes, industrialization, classroom, ways of thinking, classification, yeah. all of that. And he uh -huh. saw it in terms of print. So, I mean, when I first read McLuhan or heard uh -huh. him, uh -huh. I literally could not read a page for six months. Uh, what, what, because I, 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 I said, linear sequential thinking. <laughs> yeah. He's right. Right. I right. can't do it. You want something all at <laughs> once, right? Yeah, you want yeah. those sensory yeah. ratios, right. Yeah. And back to the bardic tradition, maybe. He would yeah. say we yeah. were yeah. closing yeah. quotes on the literate tradition. We're going back to a bardic, uh, well, pre-literate yeah. kind but, of world that the well, electronic yeah. uh, in, in environment well, precedes. Well, that's what he precedes. said, Harold. Yeah. But that, uh, you know, I found out, and a lot of people found out, was more an analogy. Yeah. It was not that operative. Okay. You couldn't really work that way as if you were in an oral culture. It was uh -huh. a good analog, but it wasn't functional. Uh huh. That's what led me to go for cybernetics. Yeah. You know, right. as something that you could actually work with and design with and you know, McLuhan was brilliant in his insights. But yeah. when you'd say, What are we gonna do, Marshall? We'd say, I don't know, it's yeah. too early to tell. Too early to tell, right? <laughs> too early, too early to, tell. to tell. Yeah, yeah. but it, but he raised these things and another oh, yeah. person whose name ought to be brought up in that same context seems to me it, philosophically, you know almost well-known or popular context was Buckminster Fuller. Oh, yeah. Was very, yeah. very... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And both of these two, if I may, were comprehensivists, or yes. attempt to be comprehensive yes. rather than specialist, and yes. argued that, that yeah. I, oh, idea, yeah. didn't yeah. they? Fuller was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Fuller, we did an interview with him at Rain Dance. Yes, you did. Yeah, we're going to talk about yeah. Rain Dance. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But he, he was another major influence... Uh, Pre-cybernetic influence, would you say? Well, or? for me, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I didn't make a lot of Fuller. I sort of, uh, you know, I respect him, I liked him, but there was something about his style of thinking that was not that congruent with mine. I'm okay. not an engineering intelligence. Right, you know? right, uh, right. I was more attracted to McLuhan, though, of course, enormous respect for Fuller and his gifts and his courage. Yeah, you know? right. And he was terrific. Yeah, yeah. and then, and you were then through the McLuhan thing, and, you, and that was interesting, you had worked with computers, because, uh, you know, we're, we're now coming into an age where the computer and telecomputing yeah. seems to be doing a lot of what we thought might be happening in uh, video, and yes. that kind of thing we were talking yeah. about. But you were you were interested in that, and then you got you got to be involved with the with the electro with video, yes, and with the video in terms of video being different than television, one yes. should understand. Yeah. And the video really didn't start, I would think, in a certain sense, in terms of accessing these new electronic capabilities until from Japan came these little portable units. Yeah, and so yeah on. that was really that the was beginning. sixty-eight. You mentioned yeah, it earlier. Yeah, sixty-seven. Maybe share a little of the excitement because I think you got the first porta pack off the boat. Almost, well, Namjoon Pike claims oh, he did. All right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> My first porta pack came from a man named Buckner, yeah. who owned one percent of Sony stock. This yeah. was interesting. Uh -huh. He was out of, actually out of the Watson IBM family. Mm -hmm. And he thought McLuhan was the biggest thing to come down the pike since Jesus Christ. Right. And he went to Fordham and donated some of the first portables uh -huh. to Fordham. Uh -huh. And Culkin looked at it and says, what are we going to do with this? I yeah. says, oh, don't worry about it. I'll, you know. yeah. So I experiment. You know, I just went into experimentation mode. I did all kinds of things. I'd hang the camera from the ceiling in my living room and run around. 
I'd find people like Frank Gillette, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, subsequently started Rain Dance. Yeah, actors, uh, children, artists, know, artists, yeah. actors, children. You yeah. know, McLuhan said, "Artists are the antennas of the race. Right. They're going to help us figure this out." Right. He's still true. Yeah, yeah. It's still true. I said, yeah. "So let's go." You know, and then I wound up working as an artist myself. And you, and you, and and having that, having that ability to have instant replay, instant yes. feedback. It's not film. It's different. You right. know, and all of that sort of thing. Right. Heady times, exciting times. Oh yeah, very exciting. And and you can share with it. And you're an artist, and you're understanding the sensibilities from the artist community and so forth. Then you you teamed up, as you said, with Frank Gillette and Schamberg. And so forth. Maybe yeah. share a little bit of that. The the rain dance. When did that get started? That was a, and share what it was. And, yeah. And try to give a feel for the uh, artistic community and the. The, their sensibility toward these new media in that time frame of the well, late '60s. Tough. I mean, Rain Dance was uh, <coughs> was conceived by Frank Gillette, who's mm -hmm. a painter. As I said, I had I had given him his first video camera, and you know, I let him have it for three months to afford him equipment. He got very excited. He connected with different people. His idea was uh, Rain Dance was an acronym for R and D. I see, and it was R and D for the counterculture. Right. As opposed to RAND, right. RAND Corporation. <laughs> RD. And the idea was we have to really think through how to use electronics in a cultural sense. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the project. And mm -hmm. so it was, it was uh, Frank and Ira, who was a filmmaker, Beryl Corot, mm -hmm. uh, Phyllis Gershney, mm -hmm. uh, Schamberg. Uh, Michael Schamberg, yeah. Dean and Dudley Ev Everson, uh -huh. you know. And it became and Louis Jaffe, and it became a collective. Yes, you know, here in New York. Here in New York, it started on Fifty Seventh Street with Louis Jaffe's investment money. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, that dried up. They they had all kinds of ambitions about getting rich on it, which yes. of course never happened. Right, right. But then at the same time, the State Council on the Arts, through Rockefeller, was yes. was dumping money into the arts. Right. It was a lot of funny money. Mm -hmm. So I put on the suit, <laughs> and became. Well, what happened was the Howard Wise, who had a gallery on 57th sure, Street. Sure, it was an important gallery, Howard Wise Gallery. Yeah. And he had this show, TV as a Creative Medium, right. which was incredible. You know, it was sold out. I had, you know, I had a piece where people went into a private booth and worked with the feedback with themselves for yeah. two minutes, and then it was erased. Mm -hmm. And the lineup was incredible. My own mother couldn't even get into the piece. No fooling. What, do you remember what year that would have been? Actually, it was. 68. That was 68. It was 68, 69. Yeah. I think 69. Heady time. Oh, yeah. 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 People were out there. Bobby know. Dylan has said something was blowing in the wind, and there was. There was. Yeah. There was a sense of transformation, yeah. and there was a people who saw this media as part of the element that could bring about yeah. appropriate transformation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In I a way that's hard for young people to be able to realize. Yeah, you know? I mean, this cable television thing is commonplace now, but yeah. I can remember going with Thea Sklover mm -hmm. to a meeting right. of a board right. in Chinatown, right. the first meeting about mm -hmm. cable access in New York, right. you know, and right. trying to explain to people it doesn't have to be that. Yeah. We can make something else out of it. Yeah, and it can be open to the people. Yes, yeah, all of that. Yeah. I don't know who some of the people in the industry were. Chuck Dolan was here. I guess it was yeah. Sterling Manhattan. Then they had, and yeah. you know the whole the whole growth of the cable oh, yeah. industry, and somehow they got this access, which is a little bit unique that there is existing oh, yeah. within the communication of the country to have something like access. I'm not sure we have anything like that in. Uh, do we have things like that in print or not? I'm not sure. Mm, not really. I yeah, I mean, to where it opens up to the public. Yeah. 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 But anyway, t talk some more about if you can about the rain dance and also about your own philosophical trendings. Then I mean, you got well, you, and also we want to talk about the book because sure. you go chronologically through the books, phases of your life, yeah. things you're interested in. But that rain dance was an exciting. Well, uh, we had a loft on 22nd Street. Uh -huh. You know, we had a designer come in and do this crazy furniture stuff. Yeah. We all had porta packs. You know, mm -hmm. we were shooting videotape all the time. Right. Uh, and it was spontaneous yeah. because it was, you know, when you're out there with a porta pack, people still get this high. You know, mm -hmm. they understand that if you go out there with a porta pack and perceive something in the raw, and mm -hmm. then show it to someone else and mm -hmm. see their perception, and you see it right away. You see it right away. Yeah. You know, you've got a shared understanding of things that other people don't. And in cybernetic language, you have a feedback loop. Exactly. <laughs> that maybe people don't. And right. but Paul, we don't talk about porta packs anymore. We talk about camcorders. Camcorders. I'm oh, sorry. Right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and they're very ubiquitous. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's well, a one, but, uh, yeah, that's right. I understand. No, I was just I making it. a joke. No, no. I, 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 you're right. But you're I mean, right. that fact that you have that instant feedback—that's not film. It's not movie. It's not having to send it off and wait two weeks. It was instant. Instant. And that has implications, psychological implications. Yes. And yeah. if I'm not mistaken, you got involved with, along with uh, 
Well, they had Bucky Fuller uh, being instrumental in terms of inspiring the whole Earth Catalog. Right. That brand got right. going, Stuart right. Brand. And then they also got interested in Gregory Bateson. Right. And did you. Yeah. And cybernetic Thinking. theory through Bateson. Was through that Bateson. the thing that you oh, did? Yeah. And oh, maybe you yeah. share a little of that shift if you could. Or your well, thinking and also your geographical meanderings. Well, where you started to go. You went upstate for a while. There. I did go upstate for a while. Bateson was Bateson I met at a conference in Princeton in 1970. Mm -hmm. It was 20 people around a table. Yes. And it was uh, Vic Joshua who mm -hmm. ran the Center for the Study of Social Change that we had worked with. Mm -hmm. He configured this conference, and Frank and I were there as the Young Turks with the video camera. Right. And um, I didn't know who Bateson was. Yeah. I had no idea. And we were in there with all these heavies. It turned out Philip Slater, Bateson, Harley Shands, uh, Warren Brody, a lot of really serious thinkers. A lot of serious minds, yes. Talking about social change. Yes. And Frank and I were there as, you know, as I said, the Young Turks. And uh, believe it or not, we had no, t no agenda and no papers. Mm -hmm. We are going to sit together for three days. Mm -hmm. There was a square table to begin with, right. right? And the first day was a fight over the shape of the table. <laughs> literally, literally. How can you get anything done? This linear grid, blah, 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 right? So that night, I mean, this is not how conferences go Bateson. these days. Bateson oh, he's there. such a towering figure. Yeah, go yeah ahead. he's six foot five. No, but right? I meant all right, intellectual yeah. I meant. Yeah, yeah. All, all of yeah, that's right. But, you know, what happened was the first night yeah. there were four of us that were a dissenting cluster uh -huh. and we trashed the room. Uh huh. Oh. Turned the tables over, turned the couches over, all the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And then next morning when everybody else walked into the room mm -hmm. and we came down late, there was a huge confrontation. Yes. Right? The uh -huh. guy who was the um, organizer? Or? No, the, the guy was the head of the mental health clinic mm -hmm. for Roosevelt Hospital. Mm -hmm. Actually, picked up a table and threw it at the television. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember hearing myself say, uh, come on now, I'm the youngest guy here, yeah. right? Yeah. I haven't heard anything from you supposed heavies. I haven't heard from my friends. Sit down, you're heaviest guy. We'll sit down and talk. We'll put the camera on and we'll shut up and we'll listen. Did right? this happen? This really? actually happened. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And who did that? That would well, be Mr. Bateson. That's Bateson, oh, right? Of course. So Amazing. They, so Amazing. they put Bateson yeah. on the chair, right? I hope you get that. Did you tape it? Vic has those. Yeah, all right, great. So anyway, he sits up and I'm behind the camera, right? Yeah. So what does he do? He yeah. says, Paul, would you come up and talk to me? Oh, he wanted you to be a sounding board or something. Well, right? this or metalogue process, metalogue, right, you right. know, the Socratic dialogue. Yeah, huh. So I did, and that was my beginning of involvement with Mr. Bateson. Mr. Bateson. Right? You hadn't read any of his stuff or anything? I didn't anything? even know who he was. Didn't know who he was, but you had read. Had you gotten to McCulloch yet, or have you gotten no, to no, any of... No, McCulloch came you'd, later. You'd read Fuller? You'd read Fuller McLuhan, and, and McLuhan. You were with McLuhan and that's so over, and yeah. you were being introduced into this other kind yeah, of way of thinking and so forth, yeah, which yeah. gets very involved and begins oh, yeah. to involve you in, in uh, you know, in cybernetics yes. itself. Right? Oh yeah. 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 Had you read um, uh, who was Norbert it? Norbert Wiener. No. Norbert Wiener. You I hadn't, hadn't yet. I hadn't really read it. Okay. And, you know, Life is a learning process. Oh, and yeah. Coming out. Right? Yeah. And, and and Bateson at the time was uh, passing out his paper on alcoholism. So yes. Schizophrenia. That came a little later, okay. you know, or earlier, I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. for me at the time, the paper was out, and I had to read it 12 times before I understood it. Because uh -huh, uh -huh. it really is a different way of thinking. Well, at least you, you know. had the wit to, and the ability to be able to understand yeah, it. Yeah, it's very complex stuff. Yeah, it is, it's complex, but it's also simple in okay. a certain way. Okay. When, it, when it falls into place, it's uh -huh. very simple. Now, Bateson became in the mind also with, um, what's it, the fellow... Um, Stuart Brand and others. Yes. He became, in a certain sense, inspirational, as they put oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Fuller had been, and then Bateson, Bateson Bay yeah. became inspiration to the whole Earth Catalog yeah. and Coevolutionary Journal. Oh yeah, major thinker, accepted as oh, such yeah. by many, many people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you were there at the beginning, in a certain sense, of his emerging as a major figure in the counterculture. In the counter yes, exactly. He was just beginning to emerge in at 1970. That point, sure, that was yeah. true. Yeah, uh -huh. we we had tracked him down and asked for one of his papers. He gave us this great paper on a budget of flexibility for New York City. Uh huh. And I learned my cybernetics really from Bateson, you know, uh -huh. from reading him stuff and talking to him. He was very generous with me. All right. You know, I would visit him in California, and he would spend a few days with me. And then we did that metalogue. You yes. Know. Uh, and well, you sat down with some of the heavies, Paul, right? Yeah. Haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm fortunate. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's that's yeah. that's really good that you yeah. were able to do that. I also have, you know, as a learner, I have the monastic tradition yes. behind me. And uh -huh. I, uh, if a teacher recognizes that someone really wants to learn mm -hmm. and can dispose themselves to learn, right. someone like Bateson, they're more than happy to 
right. engage that. You know? Now you and then you you started and then you you, you started learning you're getting into into as a, as a that's the same <laughs> into uh, cybernetics. Yeah. And then you picked up on Wiener and so forth. And you started to get into into a view of seeing things in terms of circuits. Yes. Rather than in terms of only metaphors and right. so forth, which others right. would try to get a com again always moving in a comprehensive attempting yeah. at a comprehensive. Yes philosophical yeah. tradition, yeah. which is probably intrinsic to per all of these people that you were yes. majorly concerned with. You're looking for a big picture, yes. trying to understand yes, very much. where we are and right. what possible. Yeah, remember we used open to talk things. about the big picture? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we used to do that, you know. Some people, I guess, still do real late at night sometimes, you know. But things have gotten very specialized. Yeah. But you, you, but oh, cybernetics yeah. was a doorway toward that. Yes, it was. But so it was a different pattern than a poetic, uh, metaphor-based yes, kind yeah, of approach. I, I became frustrated with poetry and metaphor, uh -huh. you know, as as ultimately <laughs> not operative, mm -hmm. you know, at least, yeah, right. I mean, for all their value, and I love language and I Absolutely. love poetry, yeah. but I was looking for something that would work, you mm -hmm. know, and when I got onto these circuits and yeah. thinking in circuits, mm -hmm. I says, this is going to work, you know, yeah. for electronic technology right. in a new age, you have to think cybernetically. Yeah. So I began to go about it and I thought, Jesus, cybernetics is great. And then I ran up against the theory of logical types, uh, okay. which, no. which is part of the cybernetic heritage from Russell and Whitehead, the mathematicians at the turn of the century, yeah. and Bateson used that as his major tool. Was that in the Principia Mathematica? Or? Pre Cheap yeah. in Mathematica, yeah, yeah. Right. and okay. and the theory of logical types, as yeah. as you remember, is uh, you know the the uh, the class of chairs is not a chair. Yes, right. Don't eat the menu card, eat the meal. Yes, you know, yeah. and, but it's a hierarchic system. Yes, uh huh. Uh -huh. So for me, the buzzer went off. Uh huh. Uh oh, uh -huh. here comes the old hierarchy. Yeah. You know, right. where's the pope? Where's the other guys? You yeah. know, and right. and a top down sort of situation. And that's what you were worried about with this established culture. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and then you go to this alternate theory, and it's yeah. set up the same way. So that became yeah, you get three people, and they set up a bureaucracy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, right. So that became my particular conundrum. Yeah. How do you? Resolve. How do you think cybernetically without hierarchy? Well, it's not only your conundrum; it's a conundrum we all have, and, a certain, yeah. and still have with yeah, us, don't yeah, we? I yeah. mean, yeah. I've know. got a solution. Yeah. I mean, I've got a formal solution. Talk to us about it. All well, right. I, I mean, uh, Bateson, Bateson's partner in cybernetic theory was Warren McCulloch, who had chaired okay. the Macy conferences. McCulloch was dead by the time I got involved in this, uh -huh. but I got to his writing through Avery Johnson and, and Warren Brody. Uh -huh and spent a lot of time working on McCulloch, reading McCulloch. Mm -hmm. And McCulloch argued, you know, we need a triadic logic. We haven't mm -hmm. got a triadic logic. If we got a triadic logic, we can break through on this. The person who's done the most on this is Charles Sanders Peirce. All, All right. right. All right. Who was the philosopher that is, you say in your book, is the, perhaps the most innovative philosopher, but is not well known. Not well known, mm -hmm. but generally acknowledged as the best philosopher this continent's produced. Amazing. He, he Amazing. He ought to be known, right. Yeah. He died when? 1914. Okay, right. He's the giant behind James and Dewey. William okay. James was a friend and a student. Dewey drew a lot of his ideas from Peirce. Uh -huh. uh, Peirce was incredible. I mean, he produced 33 volumes of microfilm, mm -hmm. you know, and a very turbulent life. There's a great life of Peirce by a man named Joseph Brent. Okay. Uh, that's brilliant and very worth reading. But Peirce... Um, <coughs> was after a triadic logic, did not get it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Though he yeah, made yeah. many attempts. Right, right. So I went back to his, and I said, okay, Purse, now we've got it. Because you remember, how I'm trying to use video to change the society. Okay. I'm trying to use video to decode ecological systems. Okay. I want a systemic understanding of information that will do that that's non-hierarchical. Uh -huh. All right? So I say, okay, Bateson's got it. No, he doesn't. Theory of logical types. Uh -huh. Got to go for triads. Uh -huh. Okay. Triads as opposed to dyadic or triads di as opposed to, to as opposed to dialectic di as opposed to dialectic yeah. as opposed to dyads. Yes. But mainly intransitive. Uh huh. Meaning. Yeah, intransitive is an important word to you. Yeah, yeah. It means like. Uh, well, one way to explain it is Cezanne, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Cezanne, painter. a painter. Yeah. When Cezanne is painting and yeah. he's choosing between his blues and his whites, right. and his whites and his browns, yeah. he can choose blue over white and white over brown, but that that doesn't stick hierarchically. He doesn't have to choose blue over brown now. Right, right. He can go around and choose brown over blue. Okay, yeah. So an artist yeah. 
thinks instinctively without a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. He thinks in this hierarchy, in this mm -hmm. triadic mm -hmm. way uh -huh. that McCulloch was talking about. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. close to the survival system and the nervous system. Uh -huh. I mean, McCulloch argued... That's close to the way things work. Yes. Yes. Yeah. McCulloch argued that if, if, if I go to hit yeah. you, right. you don't say, uh-oh, he's coming to hit me. Is it okay if I move? <laughs> yes, that's right. You better move quick. Too slow. Yeah, right, right, right. So right. that's going to happen so fast. Much less the operation of an organism where it's all interconnected and everything yes. is interconnected with feedback loops among it. It's an incredible kind of thing oh, yeah. that goes on, and that's just the way nature is set right, up. Right, and yeah. so you have to have those multiple feedback loops, yeah. and they happen so fast it has to happen heterarchically. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And my argument is that art simulates survival behavior. I see. Yeah. That's its real function. Uh -huh. You know, drama <coughs> simulates combat and courtship. Uh -huh. um, you know, a cathedral is, uh, is a kind of fortress never really used as such. Uh -huh. You know, you're simulating survival in serious art and ritual and religion. Yeah, and do, does, do you think it gets to be Paul, where we get, you know, we we're talking about a body with all the feedback and the yeah. DNA is an incredible thing. Yeah. I mean, and to, to where it's getting to be with the electronic systems that the the speed of the now with because even yeah. when you and I were talking about '69 back talking about that time, yeah. when was the silicon or the microchip was 1971 I think and right. and the, this incredible array of developing faster yes. and faster speed of yes. electronic circuits and so is opening up new possibilities oh, yeah. that we weren't able to see but very I much. mean that's just a side note a yeah. sidebar in a sense no, but it's very true it, yeah. it's, it's sort of making real some of the things that you were investigating philosophically yeah. with again Peirce right. McCulloch Bateson, Bateson, McLuhan, and René Thom. René Thom. Yeah. He was a mathematician, a yeah. topologist. Right? Yeah, French And that was important for what you were trying to develop in terms of the interlooping, without going into a great deal of detail. But well, okay, we got all these guys on the table. Let's well, that's about it. Is that about yeah, it? Yeah, that's, that's the major. Those major, are the heavies yeah, from the standpoint of where you yeah, were coming yeah. from, right? Well, Tom, uh, this was a friend of mine, Vic Joshua, who handed me the first paper translated from French into English of René Tom's. Mm -hmm. My French is not very good. Yeah. And it was this called catastrophe theory. Yeah. You know, which has to do with mapping discontinuous patterns, mm -hmm. right, or mm -hmm. events. It yes. includes time. Uh -huh. And I said, geez, this guy's got it. Uh -huh. In other words, if if you're dealing with television yes. and you're looking for a math for television All right. analogous to say Euclidean geometry for paper All right. yeah. where are you going to find one? Here I am using video and video has to do with understanding events, how, a, how something happens, right. all right? How a water water falls, how and how events interloop and interconnect, yes, and yes. interfold and infold, right? right. right. And and, yeah. and so so how are you going to understand that? So yeah. you need you need some sort of mathematics of events, yeah. and Tom had it. You know, he had this. He had it was topology. Yeah, topology yeah. means relations of position independent yeah. of measurement. Okay, right, okay, right. Mathematical, yeah. uh, mathematical realm of mathematics, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, we can... Uh, yeah, we can go into great detail. Yeah, yeah. but, but I, mean, yeah. I mean, this was... He uh -huh. came out of uh, the Bourbaki group, which uh -huh. was an anonymous group in France that tried to rebuild math after the Second World War. I see, okay. And this guy is brilliant. Uh -huh. you know? And I, sure. I, I met him, uh -huh. uh, I sent him some of the triadic stuff I was working on, and uh -huh. he wrote back and he said, I don't know what you're doing, but it seems wonderful, let's uh -huh. meet. So we met. It was a nice connection. One of the things that happened was he said, not knowing I had anything to... This to is do, in the early 70s? Now? Yeah, the early yeah, 70s right. at Columbia. Uh -huh. Not knowing I had anything to do with McLuhan, he said, he said, you know, I think McLuhan's right. <laughs> 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 you know, which suggests that yeah. he's, his math could yeah, yeah. map McLuhan's insights. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. So anyway, the, yeah. you know, I, I incorporated uh, Tome's catastrophe theory, right. Peirce's triad, you know, mm -hmm. as far as he got, and then I had to make the breakthrough myself. Peirce's triad, right? Okay. Well, Peirce's uh -huh. triadic, yeah. attempted triadic logic. First and second. First and second, the thirdness right, right. of his category. With the signs and the semiotics? Or? Semiotics yeah. comes out of those three. Yeah, okay. Semiotics, you know, has to do with representing something for somebody in some respect. Oh. Signs. You know. Okay, signs, right. Yeah, uh -huh. signs of things. Yeah. Again, if you're, if, you know, again, the major project was how do you interpret the ecology so you don't destroy it? Well, okay. you have to represent it on, electronically to the people who live in a place so that they understand the place in such a way as they don't destroy it. All right, yeah. This was, I mean, at the time I had money from the State Council on the Arts from yeah. 71 to 76. This is when we met. Yeah, right. Up in right. New Paul's area. Right, right. You know, so that's the problem I'm working on. Yeah. So I'm drawing Bateson's cybernetics, I'm drawing Tome in, and I'm, I'm reading Peirce, because mm -hmm. the library at SUNY had a great Peirce right. collection. You know? uh -huh, uh -huh. And I'm saying that, damn it, they don't have the core piece. Yeah. You know, so that's what I really worked on, and I was able to transform, well, I don't know if you can describe this that easily, but 
you know, I was able to develop a triadic logic, a formal figure regulation for three-part interaction uh -huh. that served as the core to build a whole system where I eventually built a whole television channel dedicated to the environment. Okay, I wonder if maybe we could back up a little bit. Sure. And, and you went upstate. You were upstate for, you were in New York? Monastery, right. you, and then you want to—you have major uh, times in your life that you uh, yeah. outline in your book. Right. Which again, let's let's let people take a look at it real quick now. If you know it's gone, sure. let people look what it looks like so they can see yeah. it in the bookstore, and yeah. we'll let them know how they can get it. But it's called Video <laughs> Mind, Earth Mind. It's really good. It's a compilation of a great deal of the thinking and so forth. But you lay this out in chronologic terms, yeah. in terms of four or five different main theories. Yeah. One was upstate, where you well, upstate there's, in the early period, maybe you could lay it out, and then talk about what okay. was being highlighted in those periods. Well, the, we've talked a lot about the first period, rain yeah. dance in New York City. Right. Then there's the period upstate from 71 to 76. Mm -hmm. Then I left the camera and went and worked by, in the bioregional movement. Bioregional, all right. And then I went and worked. That was here in Jersey, right? Right, in yeah. Jersey and mm -hmm. in California. Okay. And then I worked for... Uh, five years, I came back to New York City, went back to designing the television channel. This work, uh, Echo Channel. Echo Channel. Right. You know, which that's, took me five years to design. That's a lot of work that people might want to begin to look at again. Yes, you know, yes, right I now. Would hope yeah, go so. ahead. Yeah. And then the last uh, period was also in New York, trying to get that channel implemented and working in various contexts like the cathedral and in the art world and uh -huh, other places. Uh -huh. yeah. And all the while working out this triadic system yes. and have, dealing with this philosophical question oh, yeah. as an artist yes. and as an ecologist, yes, yeah. an ecological artist yeah. who's concerned, and as a cyberneticist. Yes, right? yeah. All of that. Oh, yeah. that's, uh, that's investigating some of the most important questions that there are presented to the human species well, now, as it were. So it seems to me. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So you, you did that, and um, you, you were developing all of that. And you say, you, let's go back to this again. You said you were developing toward a triadic system you think that had been missed by the others by taking, borrowing from various people oh, and yeah. comprehensive, yeah. had come up with a kind of system of understanding that is a, a, the core of a really big, important understanding. That, that's my contention. Now, yeah. what, well, can you share with us what do you see? Well, let's get uh, it on tape here. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple of levels we can do it at, Harold. One is. Um, well, I'll go back to the period in New Paul, 71 to 76. Okay. One of the things after Rain Dance, which was a small group that was yeah. terrific together, but eventually small group dynamics split people up. Right. All right. Right. So one of my problems was if you've really got a triadic system, mm -hmm. maybe you can work it out that three people can cooperate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Normally you get three people, two combine and push the other one out. Yeah. It's normal. Happens a lot, yeah. You right. can't look in four eyes at once. Triadic cyclone. Exactly. John Lilly wrote, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, it happens. Yeah. It's, I mean, right. we've all you right. know, been up against it. Yeah, okay. right, right. So one of my projects was to try and develop a way for three people to work cooperatively without excluding anybody. Mm -hmm. And while I was in New Paul's and had support from the Art Council to try and do um, environmental work, I said, all right, I'm going to focus partly on uh, in trying to invent cooperative behavior among three people. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, I needed a mathematics. I mean, I have 45 hours of tape of people running around in threes, you know. Right. And in order to actually get the practice which is analogous to, say, Tai Chi or yoga, yeah. but for a small group, uh -huh. I had to outline figures on the floor mm -hmm. in an unambiguous mathematical circuit uh -huh. so that if you change your position, you change your relation. This is hard to describe mm. on the fly, but essentially... It begins to look like a Klein bottle. Yes, <laughs> it is. No, it is. It's yes, a Klein, right. you know, a Mobius. A Mobius, because yeah. it has yeah. no orientation. Right. Yeah, right. you're right. on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, I'm not really, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I mean, I'm just looking around the edge a little bit, you know. But go ahead. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, I, uh, you know, if you look at... If, if someone looks at themselves... Uh, I look at myself on television yeah. here, right? Mm -hmm. We've got a yeah. monitor behind Yeah, me. you can see that. I put my hand out. Mm -hmm. This handshake would work mm -hmm. if we connect it, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if I did this in a mirror, it wouldn't work. I'd get another hand coming back this way. Right. All right? So mm -hmm. we've had a mirror relation to ourselves all along, but mm -hmm. video gives you a Moebius strip yeah. relation. I see. Right. Okay. So I took that Moebius strip and developed it into a six-part circuit uh -huh. that three people could share 
without excluding anybody. Uh -huh. So you're never forced to choose between Jack and Jill. Uh -huh. Your choices are always positions in this figure, uh -huh. and no choice excludes anyone. Is this something that would have been possible, let's just say in practical yeah. terms, is it possible for a human, uh, human society, a societal organization, that uh, possibilities of this become available to us that was not available to us historically, or this would have always been available to us, but we now have a way of, 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 of documenting it? Or is it something to do with the emergence of electronics and the extension of our consciousness that electronics well, is, that is making available yeah. possibilities to us that were not there historically? Yeah. I always go to this line it's of James Joyce, history is a nightmare from which we're, we're trying, trying to wake up. It's a good question. You know, yeah. or, or is, there, is there something that the electronics or the, the evolution of extended consciousness is making available to us that has not historically a liberation and a well, loose I, yeah, word I, I mean, of, I, in my experience, know? yes. Okay. All right. Now, other people can argue other ways. For uh -huh. example, in parts of China, yeah. people beat the dyadic thing. If there were three of us and mm -hmm. you asked me a question, yeah. I would answer the question speaking to this person uh -huh. Uh -huh. so as not to exclude uh -huh. that person from our dyadic conversation. Right. Yeah. So there are little, and that's a long historical That's a long historical yeah. But that's not the intransitive thing that I was able to get. Yeah. And you know, I learned a lot from Al Shefflin, the guy who, you know, most of the stuff about body language comes out of his work. Okay. He wrote a book called How Behavior Means. Oh, right. Okay. And in New York, I worked with him very closely for a year, uh -huh. inventing behavior. Uh -huh. Now, Shefflin had a very grim view of human behavior, and it came from the late 50s. He and Bird Whistle and Margaret Mead and some other people right. all got together and did frame by frame studies of family therapy. I see, yeah. Okay. All right. right. And in their studies of frame by frame therapy, uh, they were trying to understand human behavior. And that was the first time mm -hmm. the species had fed back and looked at itself that closely. And been able to. Exactly. Or had the technology had made the it technology. possible. Right, right. Now, was, I mean, <laughs> Shefflin, uh, you know, God bless him, he, he had to get a little drunk to tell me the story. Right? <laughs> well, you know. Six graduate students on the project. Yeah. Yeah. Right? All of whom were married, all wound up divorced. Yeah. The six mm -hmm. uh, professionals all developed serious physical ailments. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Trying to absorb, because, uh -huh. you know, yeah, Chef and said, look, yeah. I don't care what poetry is going on in your head. Yeah. I can show you things baboons doing the same thing. Combat, uh -huh. courtship, greeting, party, yeah. whatever, you know. Uh -huh. So, I mean, that was what uh, I was up against in terms of how do you invent behavior. You ask yeah. how could you do this. Yeah. Well, they had all these tapes. I went out with the idea, if, if I look at behavior enough and look at it, and look at it, I'd do these tapes and I'd look and I'd look, I'd study it for a year and I'd go back and maybe try this, try yeah. that. Uh -huh. I could not have invented this pattern uh -huh. without video. Maybe somebody else could have. I, yeah. I certainly could not yeah, have. Right. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, these things are going, these things are, these things, so, so that is something that perhaps these things are making, and again, as I said to you earlier, we're coming to telecomputing now, yes. and this micro yeah. chip, yeah. Silicon revolution is absolutely staggering. You said in one yeah. point in your book, you've investigated video and the implications yeah. of video, but that in a, in a certain sense, the computer in the popular imagination or otherwise yeah. is not, and, and George Gilder and others right. will write, microcosm right. will write about, we're going into telecomputing right. with fiber optics right. and that right. sort of thing. Right. You think there's something to be said for it? Oh, does yeah. it make a difference? Oh, I think it does make a difference. Okay. I mean, I think we're going digital. Mm -hmm. You know, I explored this from the video end, as you yes, said, right. and I consider this book a kind of pro prologue to what's possible. Okay. You know, I had a particular angle. I didn't stay with the digits and the computers, you know, so I've got a full tilt cybernetic video thing. Okay. And the video computers are just coming together now. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. And there's all kinds of things possible over here, mm -hmm. you know, that most computer people don't realize, you know. And in a hybrid you could really kick it off. You think there's things coming from the video side that this computer people don't yet appreciate or oh, understand? Yeah. Okay. You do. Oh, they got sure. something to learn from us oh, or yeah. from the videos? Oh, yeah, sure. Because they seem to be taking a very high handed way often, you know, these computers are moving, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I can if that's, that's the wrong well, approach, right? Well, I, no, because these things a, are a blending. Yeah, yeah, well, but how they blend is really yeah. important. It is, you know, isn't it? You know, yeah. because right. the digitalization, mm -hmm. you know, can colonize people's future. I mean, these are heavy stuff, so we have to really think through. With video, I was forced to stay very close to human concerns. Yes. Because you're dealing with feedback, or I chose to. You're dealing with feedback, you're dealing with nature. For me, electronics was a way to connect with people, uh, create ways people could connect, create ways to connect with nature. Uh -huh. You know, now the digital uh, um, uh, PCs and so forth, yes. that's not necessarily the case, uh -huh. you know, because they go right to symbols. You yes. know? In other words, their sign system is all symbols. There's right. no 
there's no indexicality, right. you know, there's uh -huh. no iconicity necessarily, uh -huh. or it's a sort of second degree iconicity. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot I think that can be learned. So there's a gap between that and reality. Oh yeah. 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 And it, so. it sometimes it's confused. It, we have this virtual Yeah, the virtual reality that yeah. they talk about. Yeah. And that sort of thing. Yeah. You know. Uh, I, I'm just wondering where you, you you were also we haven't talked that much about it but you've been very concerned with ecology it's oh, sort yeah. of implicit in much oh, of yeah. what you're saying oh, yeah. and you, you've been investigating ecology oh, yeah. what is your thought about that I've seen you at times when you were very upset about the state of uh, the lack of concern oh, with yeah. things ecology ecological yeah. and that there's a that, that, that we're really maybe on a collision course with really important human interests in terms of no. the, the, well, the trashing of the planet yeah. no I mean it is scary I was just reading today um, yeah an article in Harper's by a guy who's bemoaning the fact why don't we take global warming seriously yeah right. you know i mean or the ozone or the ozone yeah or, right I mean, it keeps or, growing doesn't yeah, it it yeah. does yeah. yeah i mean these are realities that uh -huh. we're sort of i mean we're distanced from now here's i mean here's an interesting thing to think about and i've been trying to understand this lately i think part of the problem is that because we grew up under the threat of nuclear war right that that sense of nuclear terror <laughs> that we lived with, mm -hmm. when that sort of abated mm -hmm. and the ecological difficulties began to surface, mm -hmm. emotionally we transferred that sort of all or nothing terror right onto the ecology. All right. All right. All right. So yeah. we're, we've got an emotional set that's not really appropriate. To the reality. To the reality. Yeah. So I think part of the alarmism and so forth that people said, you know, it was a dis it was uh -huh. a displacement. Yeah. No, no, it's right. And yeah. and, and it, you know, there's also it might be, I might just say that there's that story about the the frog in a pond of or a yeah. pot, pot yeah. of water where if you raise it a half a degree, right. you know, it just goes, but if yeah. you raise it all at once it'll jump out. Yeah. You know, that kind oh, of yeah. it might be an appropriate no, one. It is. It. No, I mean the ecological situation is a serious situation. Mm -hmm. We need to develop a well, here's part of the problem. Uh -huh. If you consider television yes. as a monitoring device, right. in other words, television allows us to monitor events simultaneously with other people, mm -hmm. whether it's a sporting event, whether it's an election, whether it's a Queen's party or whatever, we monitor events simultaneously with other people. Mm -hmm. All right? The ecology is an ensemble of ongoing events all right, that yeah. we should be monitoring. Right. The difficulty is the society has not figured out how to connect monitoring to governance uh -huh. and not connect monitoring to education. Or how to connect monitoring at a multiplicity, uh, a multifaceted level, which ecology is, yes. Yes. In, in this yeah. kind of thing that yeah. you've been investigating, yeah. it would yeah. seem to me. Yeah. No, I mean, exactly. philosophically, the triadic and so forth uh, fits into that because it's, it's trying to, to, to uh, again, back to the wonder of a... Yeah. of a DNA yeah. or organi organism. You know, we need yeah. super string theory and physics and yeah, things oh, yeah. begin to open up these possibilities of thinking about this. But uh, we don't, we don't, we haven't developed that. So are you, are you, are you, you're, you're, are you seriously bothered by that? Is it, uh, oh, yeah. it's still, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. And you're still this echo channel. Maybe right. you could talk a little about that. Or you, or, you know, is there, you, you did some work here in the city and so forth. Oh, yeah. No, I work with a coalition in, when Dinkins was, uh, you mm -hmm. know, running for office, uh, my partner, actually, Gene Gardner, mm -hmm. developed a coalition of over 250 groups in the city that developed a green platform. Uh -huh. And part of that green platform was to take a municipal channel and dedicate it to monitoring the ecology that supports the city uh -huh. and develop consensus about policies or practices based on the shared monitoring, the shared perception of what's going on. It's interesting. I was just reading a thing. Uh, uh, Mr. Who was the fellow that ran NBC and PBS for a while there? Oh, yeah. Larry... Um, and that awful... Grossman, Gross, yeah. Larry Grossman. Right. He just written a book, Electronic Republic. Yes. And he spoke. It was a very good book. I thought right. I'd I recommend it. It's yeah. very good. But he, he talked about Athens, and he said in Athens, in the in the Democratic uh, Forum of Athens, uh, that there were groups of people whose job it was to inform the citizens. Many of the citizens weren't. Right. They were slaves, but it was to inform them. And that, right. so such a thing could give us the information we need to make intelligent decisions. Yes. No. That's the idea that yeah. you have a modern. You know, and all this triadic work, all this logic, is to have a coherent system that can represent for the people of New York how the ecological system is operating so that we can learn behaviors that are sustainable. Uh -huh. The problem now is to create sustainable culture. We need, we need that on a local level. We need that on a regional and a national and a, and a global yeah, level. And, and, and we, don't, we haven't developed that. No. 
We haven't. No, no. no. Yeah. I mean, there are people working on it in different areas. You know, uh -huh. People working very hard. Uh -huh. There's a lot of encouraging signs, but I mean, we get along. I know you did a lot of videoing of that kind of thing and so forth. Yeah. Well, you did a lot with Inwood Park and other kinds of things and oh, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, actually, I, I have this tape. With if you me. have a tape, you want us to show it. Yeah. You, we got time. We got do about we have ten time? minutes left. We got about okay. ten minutes or so. However you want to do. This yeah. Okay. Is, if you think it's worthwhile, we can take the time now, or uh, you know, okay. We can show. What is the tape? Uh, okay. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, this is. Uh, this whole method that I've developed has a way of scoring uh, sites. Yeah. Uh, so in 1989, I was able to do a, a, a video that was a study of natural sites in New York City. Mm -hmm. There were four of them according to this earth score method. Uh -huh. And the piece I have is a study of a waterfall in the Bronx. Okay. And you'll see water patterns going like this. Uh -huh. You know, those are tome catastrophe patterns. Okay. All right? uh -huh. So in a certain way, it's, you know, and this is sort of a meditation state to get into, to watch this. The music is by Alvin Kern. And it's, uh, you know, I would love water, and, you know, I can blah, 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 and there are these books. Yeah, you dedicate your book to the water of the earth. Yeah. Right, okay, well, let's set that up and run that, then. We're okay. running short on time. Sorry, sure, but we no, do, there's too much to talk about. But yeah. here it is, a, a tape, and this relates to your, uh, your ecological concern. Yeah. So we run that now. <laughs> We're back again, and that was really something. Those little dotting things were cheroids, or, or uh, that just happened to come up, right? Uh, Creods. Yeah, yeah, creods. Things that lo looks like uh, Chinese calligraphy. Yeah, yeah, amazing. It's beautiful. And w the tape now, w w you were trying to present uh, and, and encapsulate some of the, the thoughts yeah. we've been talking yeah. about. Yeah, the, the argument behind this kind of tape is that nature has its own score, its own notation. We don't understand it. Mm -hmm. By careful observation, we can learn how it works. Uh -huh. And this is an example. Water is the richest source of pattern. Yeah. So all of the water flow patterns that uh, you see here, mm 
uh, have catastrophe theory models behind them, I figures see. of regulation. Uh -huh. So the idea is not just to look at nature and say, oh, that's nice, but to figure out its score. Uh -huh. A uh -huh. score, like a score of a beat, musical yeah, Exactly, beat, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. What's the score in the Hudson River Basin? Uh -huh. We don't know the score. Mm -hmm. So we learn the score by systematic observation, and once we build up a shared understanding and agreement of what the score is, then mm -hmm. we can develop coherent policies and practices. And that scoring would give us a way of looking at things environmentally. Yes, yes, yeah. very much. Uh -huh. you know, and that's not dependent on language and not hierarchical. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. so, and, and, so, and then that, in terms, is relevant to this echo channel work yes, that you're talking about. Yeah. Maybe you could talk a little bit. We've only got about three or four minutes Okay, left. well, the echo channel is based on this kind of thing, how that there's a shared video mm -hmm. perception of... Mm -hmm. uh, am I still doing... Yes, that's fine. ...mucking around with my no, microphone? Yeah, no, 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 Okay. Fine. You know, that the, the eco channel has uh, the shared perception as the basic layer, and mm -hmm. that would include satellite perception and other kinds of uh, reading of the ecology. Mm -hmm. In other words, you'd, put, uh, you, you'd, you'd monitor the ecology in as many different possible ways as you could, mm -hmm. and through a semiotic system, you get a, a, an agreement about, you know, what are the basic underlying figures of regulation that support the ecology that mm -hmm. supports the city. I see. And then once you know the score, mm -hmm. you know. Once you know the score. Once you, you know the score, then you can begin to interpret it. Okay, homeowners need to understand it this way, recreational people this way, hunters this way, city people this way. Uh -huh. But, but we all understand the score, yes. you know, and it's public knowledge. Uh -huh. It's not the EPA that knows it only, yeah. or this administration, and you don't politicize an, economic, an ecological situation that supports the life of the species. And you might be able to find a, a triadic system where a great number of different people are going to be able to understand that they're part of a process with yes. others, all yeah. of whom might be able to find the common chord, which is a winning chord. Right. direction for all of them, right, right. which is what we're all looking right, for. Right. And that would apply to a bioregion yes. or to a local region right. or on larger and larger scales, right. but we need a systematic way right. of looking at these one. things. Yeah, I've got one. And you've one. got one. Yeah. Well, okay, and that's come out of a great deal of, of, of dealing with some of the people who've been most concerned in a philosophical and in a serious kind of an artistic kind of way with the implications of our extended technology from all of these sources you oh, had. Yeah. And if I may, I just want to let people know. <laughs> all, right. all right, Paul, if you don't mind, no, I'll let please, people know. Yeah. This is, uh, this is the book where he's summarized a great deal of what he's been involved with. A major intellectual force as far as developing an understanding of the major questions confronting us, the technological, the implications of our technological development. And here it is, Video Mind, uh, Video Mind, Video Earth Mind, Semiotics and the Human Sciences, and is subtitled uh, Art, Communications, and Ecology, and it's by Paul Ryan. It's published, let's let people know, by... Peter Lang Publishers. Peter Lang, and there is a phone number. Do you have? Yeah, I don't. Uh, you there's don't an, have, there's an 800 up? number. Uh, they're in Manhattan. They're in Manhattan in the book. In the in the book, and you can call them and order. This is an academic press, yeah, so right. it's not uh, yeah, generally available. Yeah, you know? but it's a per uh, people who are who follow through this conversation might really <laughs> find it interesting. And those who haven't, well, then you know, go read uh, a pocketbook or something. But anyway, we wanted to give a chance to be able to talk about something that really is serious with somebody who's been following these issues in a very serious way. And Paul, I thank you very no, much it's for my coming pleasure, for all your work over the years. It's well, major thank work, you. and uh, it just rec is to be recommended. We here on Conversations invite you to tune in. We'll be coming back again next week, like always. But Paul, it's so good to see you well, again. Well, Harold, it's a pleasure, and thank you for all your intelligent questions. Well, it's I much don't know, just 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 limping along here, trying to understand some well, very important questions. It's but a it's, graceful limp. Well, it's a, <laughs> it's an important questions that you've been raising, and they really ought to be dealt with, and and we ought to see if we, maybe we ought to be getting some of this work into a serious policy decision-making yeah. uh, venues and so forth as well. So, again, Paul Ryan, it's been your pleasure. We invite you to tune in. We'll be coming back again next week. Paul, again, thanks the best. Thank you. Harold. All the best. The best of the holiday season to you all, and uh, we'll see you next week. Until next time.